Uh, let's move to this story, which had also getting you probably a little hot under the collar and wanting to kick your own throat out. Civil servants have complained about a government crackdown on working from home. There it is. There's the headline. Uh, Jeremy Quinn, who's the Paymaster General, told Mandarins at a Cabinet Office meeting they are expected to return to their desks after officials raised concern about plans to scale down remote working. The senior minister argued that there are real benefits to being in the office, especially for younger colleagues, while teams are likely to work better face-to-face. -face. Every day of the week, people are work, will work better face-to-face. -face. Um, let's speak to Elliot Keck, Investigations Campaign Manager of the Taxpayers' Alliance. Afternoon to you, Elliot. Afternoon, Ian. Good to have you with us. Um, in fact, it, was, it wasn't until I was saying that out loud that I realised the correlation of this story with the previous one, that, you know, it's now controversial to suggest that people should go to work. Um, even, you know, certain sectors of society uh, are either giggling at you or looking down on you for daring to suggest that going to work might be the best thing to do. But that's the place we've arrived in, it seems. Yeah, and I think this speaks to a growing phenomenon in the civil service where civil servants think that they're in the job uh, to help themselves when uh, actually civil servants are there to support the government of the day and the government of the day are there to deliver for taxpayers and the government has decided uh, quite understandably that this uh, prevalence of civil servants working from home is not working. Mm. And you wouldn't have thought it would have taken much research really to work out that yeah sure you, you might be able to say four days a week is okay or something like that but on mass and with alarming mm. regularity it doesn't take much to work out this is probably not conducive with the most productive environment yeah absolutely and we've had uh, over two years now since uh, the end to the final lockdown and, and ministers have been able to look at their departments uh, uh, look at the services those departments are providing and they've clearly judged that the services are not up to scratch that civil servants are not working as productively as effectively as they should be uh, and they've made the ruling which is absolutely within their right yeah. to say actually no four days a week is the minimum and I think, you know, on behalf of taxpayers, I think that's absolutely the right call, given the way that you've seen places like HMRC, which has a big, big problem with yeah. staff working from home, the way that uh, that particular institution is performing. Uh, absolutely. There's a lot of evidence to show, as you rightly say, Elliot, that, that there are, there's a, 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 a lacking sense of uh, either urgency or efficiency going on at HMRC right now. And I think it would be crazy to suggest that that has nothing to do with the fact that half the people that work for HMRC are sitting on their sofa. Well, yeah, absolutely. HMRC really is one of the worst examples we've seen uh, in that uh, institution in particular. Consistently fewer than half of staff in the office at any one time. And at the same time, the number of calls that they're picking up has collapsed to around 50%. And we have to remember the tax system. I mean, the tax code, we're looking at about 12,000 pages now of tax code. This is an extraordinarily complex system. Yep. If you get something wrong as a business, as an individual, you're facing, you know, potentially time in prison. It's really important that you're able to pick up the phone and, and get clarity on some of these uh, extraordinarily complex uh, taxes. And at the moment, we have a situation where the department that's supposed to deal with that Yep. It's not working anywhere near as effectively as it should be. So Jeremy Quinn, Paymaster General, is telling these uh, these civils, yep. these mandarins, I do love that name, mandarins, that, you know, it might be handy if you actually came to work. Um, well, what happens there? Because they, one would assume they've probably got union support. There are civil service unions, of course, who will be saying, actually, yeah, we don't have to. Uh, can he force them back to work? What's, where does the story go from here? Well, listen, uh, in any relationship between a, a minister and, and the civil service, it, it is a, a complex relationship. There are uh, different barriers. Uh, ministers uh, don't directly give orders to civil servants. They set uh, strategies and policies that are then uh, brought into effect by the senior uh, civil servants in whatever department it, it is. But given the culture of the civil service is one in which you're supposed to faithfully uh, and impartially uh, deliver the priorities of the government of the day, I would hope that the most senior civil servants would take that yep. and look at the uh, uh, demands of ministers in terms of, quite frankly, very basic working, pra working practices and put them into effect on behalf of those ministers. There it is. Listen, uh, thank you very much indeed for your time, Elliot. Really appreciate that. Elliot Keck, Investigations Campaign Manager from the Taxpayers' Alliance, the audacity of asking people to go to work. You know, it's, it's nice sometimes being at home. Um, I, 
I get why some people are really wedded to the idea. You know, the truth be known, a lot of the jobs within the civil service were never that demanding. And the, uh, the, the culture, uh, of course there are hard-working civil servants, nobody disputes that, that massively hard-working people in specific areas. But there's a lot out there that were really, in, you know, it was, it's not hard in the civil service to get time off, to be off, request time off, have ex extra holidays, etc. Uh, no, you know, not without losing any money. I mean, it's a very generous way to live.